on the next McDougal MD, how to protect your family against E. coli and salmonella poisoning. And why fresh fruits and veggies might make you sick. Don't miss it. This is Hello Channel. On this edition of McDougal MD, we'll tell you the best ways to protect yourself and your family against E. coli and salmonella. And what are the potential dangers from imported fruits and vegetables? We've got an authoritative source for the answers. Plus, Dr. John will tell you all you need to know about nutrition during pregnancy. I'm Mary McDonough, and we've got it all right here on McDougal MD. We've got a great show. Yeah? But I want to start out talking about something very personal. Uh-oh. And I don't want you to get defensive. Oh, I'm in trouble now. I want to talk to you about your diet. Yes. And particularly during a time in your life when it's so important, and that is when you're pregnant. Yes. You know, you can go on, on, on almost any kind of diet during any other time of your life, but when a woman gets pregnant, she gets very concerned about nutrition. It's mm -hmm. what we call a teaching moment. Mm. And often what happens is women resort back to what is commonly taught, what the standard party line like is. Like drinking lots of milk. Lots of milk. Lots of right? milk, You right? go to the obstetrician, and the obstetrician tells you, or the dietician, drink four glasses of milk a day, right. eat lots of meat. And the sad thing Mine is... Mine didn't tell me that, though. Oh, good. Yeah. The sad thing is, is look at the state of the pregnant woman, woman today. Uh, she gains, I mean gains a lot, mm -hmm. 40, 50, 60 40 pounds, pounds is not is unusual. Regular. She's swollen. She has stomach aches. Uh, this is a woman who grows a baby so big that the baby can't get out of the birth canal. Mm. And so what happens is you have to take it up out through the top. You have to have cesarean sections. And it's due to the bad advice we give women in terms of good nutrition. Now, what I'd ask women to do is to think about it for a minute. Think about the fact that around the world we have women who produce lots of babies in their lifetime. They'll have uh, eight, ten, sometimes more babies. And uh, they breastfeed them all, by the way. And they maintain good health, work hard in the fields. And we're talking about women who live on a diet with no dairy products, very little meat, and their diet is based around rice or vegetables mm -hmm. or potatoes. Uh, it's a starch-based diet with vegetables and fruits. And these women do better in terms of pregnancy, in terms of the health of the baby, and in terms of their own personal health than we do in this country. Much lower cesarean section rates, uh, less infant mortality. And so what we need to do is we need to change the diet of uh, pregnant women in this country. But it, I, th I think it's a very difficult task. I think it is a difficult test, but I think a lot of it, what happened to me was, was there were things that I, that I craved. You know, you always hear about those cravings, mm -hmm. but ice cream wasn't one of them well, that's for good. me. You know what it was? Mm. Oddly enough, salad, lettuce. I ate everybody else's salad and finished well, that would be, that would be fine. I ate a lot of you know, lettuce and, um, and a lot of um, bran cereal, and my daughter loves them both. Well, funny enough. Yes, and he loves both yeah. of those foods. <laughs> Naturally, when women, <clears throat> when they start when they're early in their pregnancy, they'll have morning sickness. And mm -hmm. women, many women have told me that that's a time when they do go towards simpler things like fruits and vegetables. Crackers. And have a lot of aversions to, uh, to certain foods that aren't unhealthy, that are unhealthy for them. And so it does seem to protect them. Uh, very important dietary change uh, for women to get it right during their pregnancy. Now, what women worry about is when they're pregnant, if they eat, they're going to get fat. Mm -hmm. Well, that's just because of the kinds of foods that they eat. A pregnant woman needs to eat a lot of food. She needs to eat, you know, as many times a day as she wants. Mm -hmm. She needs to eat very nutritious food. In fact, you'd look at it as nutrition, nu nutritionally dense food. And these would be starches. Like well, starches, <laughs> mm -hmm. like, like oatmeal for breakfast, right. uh, hash browns for breakfast, cooked without grease, preferably. Uh -huh. She could have waffles and pancakes made of whole wheat flours. Right. And for lunch, it would be things like uh, vegetable soups, bean soup, pea soup, lentil soup. And for dinner, she would have uh, bean burritos or spaghetti and marinara sauce. But what about um, what about milk? Because everybody everybody thinks how many did anybody drink milk during the pregnancy? Yeah. Everybody said, oh, drink milk. Now, what would you say to substitute instead? Well, uh, first of all, I, she has to think in terms of the global picture again. The women I mentioned to you in Asia or in Africa, they don't consume milk, and yet they have healthy pregnancies, and uh -huh. as I mentioned, healthy, much healthier pregnancies and healthier babies. Uh, the idea that you need to eat this calorie-dense food. You know, milk is designed to grow a cow from 60 pounds to 600 pounds. And she wonders why she gains 60 pounds during her pregnancy with that kind of advice. <laughs> so that's out. And the substitute is? Substitute is water. Or you could have water. Or what if you cereals, crave you could milk? I mean, what milk. about those cravings? What would you say to well, somebody who, Mary, who has Mary, I crave pepperoni cravings. pizza. 
And you know what I do? I do what, what Nancy do do? Reagan told me to do, and that is just say no. <laughs> just say no. Yes. You've got to take, you've, once you learn what the right things are for you, you've got to take a stand. It's the same thing with meat. People worry about, you know, meat during their pregnancy. Okay, but someone would, I would, someone like me or someone might in the audience might say, but what if I really crave that? Do you just ignore it and say, nope, sorry, can't well, do it? It depends. John said no. <laughs> it depends, like that bowl of ice cream. Yeah, I think you ought to take and say, and say I'm going to have very little of it. Very little or of it. Because that could be a natural thing in the body, couldn't it? Is there, it there's be, a reason that you'd have that, and maybe be, you're deficient in calcium? I could be, but I guarantee you, I'm or? not dif deficient in pepperoni. I guarantee you. <laughs> That's not the problem. This is learned behavior. And again, I want to go back to the fact this is a teaching moment. So if we had dietitians, if we had obstetricians, mm -hmm. if, they were, if they were telling women that to have the safest, healthiest pregnancy, you need to eat a diet with very few rich foods like the candy bars and the cakes and the meats and the cheeses. And instead, you need to live on a diet based on starch with the addition of fruits and vegetables. We'd have m much healthier mothers, much healthier babies. There's a problem that women get. It's called preeclampsia and eclampsia. Mm -hmm. And that's where uh, toxemia, you may have heard yes. of it. That's where the, the, they have problems with the kidneys, high blood pressure, swelling, and so on. Well, there was a study done of 756 pregnant women who ate a vegetarian diet, I mean a very healthy vegetarian diet, and they only had one case of preeclampsia, whereas you would predict that 10% of them or 75 of them would have had preeclampsia. So women wanting to avoid that problem, women wanting to avoid being sick during pregnancy. Pregnancy is not supposed to be illness, although women often find it is. Women who don't want to end the pregnancy having to face losing 40, 50, 60 pounds. They need to get the dietary issues straightened out, and mm -hmm. pregnancy will be the greatest time in life like it's supposed to be. Yes, and a little bit of exercise. That exercise exercise very always helps also me a Also time to clean up other walking. bad habits, like if you're a smoker, and of course you don't want to consume I, I alcohol during most, pregnancy because yes. of damage to the baby. And uh, even cutting down on the caffeine could be very positive. Mm -hmm. I mean, that you're, you're living not only for yourself, but also for your baby and, and uh, could give the baby no greater opportunity to get off, start, start it off right than to, than to than eat what a healthy it was When diet. you first yes. started feeding it, <laughs> watch right. that. That's right. Feed it right through you. That's right. Well, did you ever get more than you expected from your breakfast eggs or that hamburger that you ate? If you are not certain about the answer to that, then you better stay with us as McDougal MD continues right after this. Learn English and have fun. On Hello Channel. Our guest on this edition of McDougal MD is a scientist who's looking for trouble in the food you eat. Please welcome Dr. Gavin Clark. Welcome. Thank you, Thank you very much. <laughs> and Dr. Clark is a microbiologist. Correct. So your specialty is looking at all those little germs. Yes. It, yes. It, do we have a problem in the food? No, I don't think you have a problem with food. You may have a problem that there have been outbreaks which have got very good newspaper coverage. And the importance of that coverage and shows such as this is to educate the public on what they should be doing themselves because the public has a distinct responsibility for their own health. And I think a lot of people don't realize that. It's well, not purely the manufacturer. What kinds of... Um Bacteria or viruses are we talking about here? Is there so, so, so the big five we got out there? Yes. Um, what you see in the newspapers is E. coli. Well, mm -hmm. E. coli is one of about 170 different types of E. coli, actually. And most of them are quite harmless and appear in everybody's intestine, animals' intestines, etc., in a benign manner. Only some of those are infectious. And the one, of course, that everybody hears about is O157H7, as we call it, because <laughs> we know the chemistry on the outside. Can, that's how you can tell there's 170 of them. Uh, and that one is the one which erroneously really has been given the name hamburger disease, because oh. you can get it from long, more things than hamburger. Just like what? what kind of foods can you get it from? <laughs> yes. Okay. It's been you get it from water, yes. unpasteurized um, cider, unpasteurized milk, meats. Uh, vegetables, uh, anything in actual fat which has come in contact with water which has been contaminated or with ground which has been contaminated with feces, with animal droppings. Okay. So in other words, these are animal originated diseases. I mean, yes, people, don't right. get, people don't get plant diseases because we're animals, we get diseases from other animals, but I don't, I've never heard of a disease from plants like none of my friends have uh, Dutch elm disease no. or aphids. Unless they have a wooden leg or something yeah, like that. Yeah, right, because we're so distant from plants. So plants are safe unless they're contaminated with animals. Is that correct? Yes. 
the actual plant is that they, there are, of course, a whole range of organisms which are plant pathogens. And so insects have their own right. diseases as well. Even bacteria have their own diseases. Of viruses infect bacteria. But the plants themselves can become contaminated. Right, with, with animal, animal things. Products. And because animal. we're animals, yes. we right. can get these infections. Yes. 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 So it becomes a bit. And since now everybody is wanting long shelf life, minimally processed, this means increased chance of things growing on the shelves in a refrigerator because of now the new pathogens, so to speak, the stereomonocytogenes and things like that, actually the grow in the refrigerator. <laughs> the stereomonocytogenes. You don't know what that is? Those! <laughs> okay. Yes. Just germs. germs. <laughs> things Can we like say that. that say germs. Okay, germs. They actually grow in the refrigerator. So long shelf life mm -hmm. means that they're actually growing on the Why display counter right. or in your refrigerator if you're not careful. So those are a problem. So you want to eat the food fresh? You, want to eat, you should be eating it fresh and... Uncontaminated. Uncontaminated. And vegetables. Uh, if you eat vegetables, you see, you put all these salads now. People have right. got these yes. prepared salads. In the regulations on prepared salads are set that they're not on the shelves longer than 10 days because of the normal population. The normal population growing up is not going to spoil your salad. Oh, in okay. 10 the, days. The germs. Don't, right. the germs. Every, okay. Everything has bacteria on it. Right. Still, right. You, me, and everything else is covered with bacteria. And everything is covered with a normal, healthy flora of bacteria. Yes. And if it wasn't for that, we'd all have infections and all the rest of it. It's when the pathogens come in, and they must be able to pathogens to get beyond the normal, healthy flora that covers everything, meat, vegetables, whatever it is, and, cause, and establish that that's when you have problems. And in the case of vegetables, if those vegetables have been contaminated by a pathogen, they're actually carrying it. Yes. You can either then grow in the food if the food is stored inappropriately, which a lot of people do, or, and therefore, reach a number which is an infectious dose. Or it may, in actual fact, come into you and, for instance, grow inside you and produce a problem. But, That's a classical case But even of fresh animal products can have harmful pathogens. Is that correct? Fresh eggs, fresh milk, oh, yes. fresh beef. And so how do you protect yourself yes, against That's what I want to know. Okay, so we have all these horrible okay, things out there. What do we do? Let's deal with the eggs. <laughs> the eggs, oh. um, eggs are very interesting from a pathological standpoint because, of course, they're very difficult epidemiologically to follow where a disease has come from. Mm -hmm. You either have the egg and somebody's eaten it and you don't have anything to test. Or you test the egg, and it's positive, but nobody has the disease because you've just <coughs> tested the one egg that's yes. live. So it's all done statistically, in actual fact. So what, if you get an egg, the classical way of salmonella infection in eggs was the fact that the bird has salmonella in its intestine. Mm -hmm. As you know, it lays the egg in very close proximity of where other things are happening. <laughs> and the uh, egg, if it's cracked, if it cools and draws in the feces that's on it, or if it's inappropriately washed in water, which is salmonella, and the water temperature is wrong, and it draws it in, in water as it cools. The salmonella goes through a crack into the egg. But, but so is there a safe theory word? that says that it gets in other ways? Yes, there's another salmonella. There's, 200, there's about 2,200 different types of salmonella. Oh, it's but confusing. One. <laughs> we're not going to hear all about them. <laughs> we won't be able to this. They're all named after towns where they were first isolated. It's, it's quite a nice <laughs> class, uh, class in geography. Um, but there's one which, um, and it's relatively recent, was proposed that it became transovarianly transferred. In other words, the bird has it in its ovum. Oh, okay. So, oh, okay. so the, the egg yolk, as it's formed, is formed with the salmonella, salmonella enteritidis, inside. So there's... The egg white goes on the outside, the shell goes on the outside, they lay it. So, so you can't be sure, even if you take proper care of that shell, that you're not going to have salmonella infection. So Correct. what do you do with the egg to make sure you don't get sick? You don't eat it raw. Okay, if you cook it, you then cook you're okay. It? If you cook it, a cooked egg is quite safe. Correctly cooked. Okay. No, okay. No runny, so uh, no Caesar yellow. salads no, are out is what you're saying? No Caesar <laughs> salads. No homemade eggnog. None of anything with, a, with raw egg in it. And no weightlifting. And eating raw eggs. There's been outbreaks in jails oh. with people doing bodybuilding and eating raw eggs. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Not a good idea. Okay. Also, not a good idea to be in one of those management uh, uh, firms which believes that management consultants come in and you do strange things. Some of them have you eating raw eggs to show that you're with the team. Oh, dear. Oh, yes, oh yes. that's no, right. No, well, we'll have to idea. definitely. Not a good idea. Raw well, eggs we with have beer. to stay yes, away from that. And but, um, so we'll get the coming cooking. up, though, we'll get more. We'll get back to this in a second. There'll be more food safety advice for you and your family, so stay with us. <laughs> There's so much information. <laughs> Hello, 
I'm Nastasia, and I'd like to introduce you to Hello Channel, the innovative new way to learn English as a second language. If you can learn English, your opportunities expand. Knowing English allows you greater job options, more money, and a better lifestyle. Here's the best part. Learning English is now easy because Hello Channel brings it right to your home. Come join our classroom, enjoy great entertainment, and improve your vocabulary, all while you watch TV. A brighter future is ahead if you'll just say hello. Our guest on this edition of McDougal MD is a scientist who's looking for trouble in the food you eat. Please welcome Dr. Gavin Clark. Welcome. Thank you, Thank you very much. <laughs> and Dr. Clark is a microbiologist. Correct. So your specialty is looking at all those little germs. Yes. It, yes. It, do we have a problem in the food? No, I don't think you have a problem in food. You may have a problem that there have been outbreaks which have got very good newspaper coverage. And the importance of that coverage and shows such as this is to educate the public on what they should be doing themselves because the public has a distinct responsibility for their own health. And I think a lot of people don't realize that. It's well, not purely the manufacturer. What kinds of... Um bacteria or viruses are we talking about here? Is there so, so, so the big five we got out there? Yes. Um, what you see in the newspapers is E. coli. Well, mm -hmm. E. coli is one of about 170 different types of E. coli, actually. And most of them are quite harmless and appear in everybody's intestine, animals' intestines, etc., in a benign manner. Only some of those are infectious. And the one, of course, that everybody hears about is O157H7, as we call it, because mm -hmm. we know the chemistry on the outside. Can, that's how you can tell there's 170 of them. Uh, and that one is the one which erroneously really has been given the name hamburger disease, because oh. you can get it from long, more things than hamburger. Just like what? what kind of foods can you get it from? <laughs> yes. OK, it's been you get it from water, yes. unpasteurized um, cider, unpasteurized milk, meats, uh, vegetables, uh, anything in actual fat which has come in contact with water which has been contaminated or with ground which has been contaminated with feces, with animal droppings. Okay. So in other words, these are animal originated diseases. I mean, yes, people, don't get, people don't get plant diseases because we're animals, we get diseases from other animals, but I don't, I've never heard of a disease from plants like none of my friends have uh, Dutch elm disease no. or aphids. Unless they have a wooden leg or something yeah, like that. Yeah, right, because we're so distant from plants. So plants are safe unless they're contaminated with animals. Is that correct? Yes. The actual plant is that they, there are, of course, a whole range of organisms which are plant pathogens. And so insects have their own right. diseases as well. Even bacteria have their own diseases. And viruses infect bacteria. But the plants themselves can become contaminated. Right, with, with animal, animal things. And because animal. we're animals, yes. we right. can get these infections. Yes. 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 yes, so it becomes a bit. And since now, everybody is wanting long shelf life minimally processed. This means increased chance of things growing on the shelves in a refrigerator because of now the new pathogens, so to speak, the stereomonocytogenes and things like that, actually the grow in the refrigerator. <laughs> the stereomonocytogenes. You don't know what that is? You Those. Say, <laughs> okay. Yes. Just germs. Germs. <laughs> things like says that. Say germs. Okay, germs. They actually grow in the refrigerator. So long shelf life mm -hmm. means that they're actually growing on the display Weather. counter right. or in your refrigerator if you're not careful. So those are a problem. So you want to eat the food fresh? You, want to eat, you should be eating it fresh and... Uncontaminated? Uncontaminated. And vegetables? Uh, if you eat vegetables, you see, you've got all these salads now. People have right. got these yes. prepared salads. In the regulations on prepared salads are set that they're not on the shelves longer than 10 days because of the normal population. The normal population growing up is not going to spoil your salad. Oh, in okay. 10 days. The, the germs. Right. The germs Every, okay. Everything has bacteria on it. I mean, right. It's still right. you, me, and everything else is covered with bacteria. And everything is covered with a normal, healthy flora of bacteria. Yes. And if it wasn't for that, we'd all have infections and all the rest of it. It's when the pathogens come in, and they must be able to pathogens to get beyond the normal, healthy flora that covers everything, meat, vegetables, whatever it is, and, cause an, and establish that that's when you have problems. And in the case of vegetables, if those vegetables have been contaminated by a pathogen that actually carrying it, yes. it can either then grow in the food if the food is stored inappropriately, which a lot of people do, or, and therefore 
reach a number which is an infectious dose. Or it may, in actual fact, come into you and, for instance, grow inside you and produce a problem. But, That's a classical but case. But even of fresh food. animal products can have harmful pathogens. Is that correct? Fresh eggs? Fresh milk, oh, yes. fresh beef, and so how do you protect yourself yes, against that's what the I want to know. Okay, so we have all these horrible okay, things out there. What do we do? Let's deal with the eggs. <laughs> the eggs, oh. um, eggs are very interesting from a biological standpoint because, of course, they're very difficult epidemiologically to follow where a disease has come from. Mm -hmm. You either have the egg, and somebody's eaten it, and you don't have anything to test, <laughs> or you test the egg, and it's positive, but nobody has the disease because you've just mm -hmm. tested the one egg that's yes. live. So it's all done statistically in actual fact. So what, if you get an egg, the classical way of salmonella infection in eggs was the fact that the bird has salmonella in its intestine. Mm -hmm. As you know, it lays the egg in very close proximity of where other things are happening. <laughs> and the uh, egg, if it's cracked, if it cools and draws in the feces that's on it, or if it's inappropriately washed in water, which has salmonella in it, and the water temperature is wrong, and it draws it in, in water as it cools, the salmonella goes through a crack into the egg. But, but isn't so there, is there another a safe theory that says that it gets in other ways? Yes, there's another salmonella. There's, 200, there's about 2,200 different types of salmonella. Oh, it's but confusing. One. <laughs> we're not going to hear all about them. We won't be able to They're all named after towns where they were first asked. It's, it's quite a nice <laughs> class, uh, class in geography. Um, but there's one which, um, and it's relatively recent, was proposed that it became transovarianly transferred. In it's other words, the bird has it in its ovum. Oh, okay. So, oh, okay. so the, the egg yolk, as it's formed, is formed with the salmonella, salmonella enteritidis, inside. So there's... The egg white goes on the outside, the shell goes on the outside, they lay it. So, so you can't be sure, even if you take proper care of that shell, that you're not going to have salmonella infection. So Correct. what do you do with the egg to make sure you don't get sick? You don't eat it raw. Okay, if you cook it, you then cook you're okay. It? If you cook it, a cooked egg is quite safe. Correctly cooked. Okay. No. Okay. No so running, uh, no Caesar running. salads no, are out, is what you're saying? No Caesar salads, <laughs> no homemade eggnog, none of anything with a with raw egg in it, and no weightlifting, and eating raw eggs. There's been outbreaks in jails oh. with people doing bodybuilding and eating raw eggs. Oh yes, oh, yes. not a good idea. Okay. Also, not a good idea to be in one of those management uh, uh, firms which believes that management consultants come in and you do strange things. Some of them have you eating raw eggs to show that you're with the team. Oh, dear. Oh, yes, oh yes. that's not right. Well, we'll have to definitely. Idea. Not a good idea. Raw well, eggs we with have deer. to stay yes, away from that. And but, um, so we'll get the coming cookies. up, though, we'll get more. We'll get back to this in a second. There'll be more food safety advice for you and your family, so stay with us. <laughs> There's so much information. <laughs> Come join our classroom. Say hello. And we're back with Dr. Gavin Clark, microbiologist. Uh, soft cheeses, can you give us some names? Oh, yes. Brie, camembert is the most common one. There's actually one that's not really a soft cheese. That's Stilton. Mm -hmm. Some Stiltons can be a risk because as it cures, the uh, acidity um, the, uh, comes back to neutrality. And then uh, you can get growth at that stage. Wow. Basically, what do you eat? Yes. Anything. Oh, you no, eat anything? No, no, I don't eat. I don't eat. Uh, um, what do you call it? Uh, macaroni and cheese, because that was left over from school days. And I don't drink cocoa because I used to have it cocoa made with water in school as well. But you just Otherwise, cook you everything. You make, Tips, yes, you cook. make sure it's cooked properly. That's, the, cooked that's properly. the message we're getting. I cook and don't drink st uh, unpasteurized uh, cider or anything clean like food, that. Clean food, cooked food. Keep, you've got to and what about clean? those sprays for vegetables? Uh, no, wash it in, in tap water. Wash them in tap Good water is better. Tap water, you want it clean, cook. S separate from raw and, and, and cooked and chill it correctly. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you for being with us. We'll see you next time. <laughs>